Okay, hi everyone. My name is Neil Stokes. I'm hoping that we're live and you can see me and hear me. Uh, I am a librarian with the Los Angeles Public Library's digital content team. Thank you for joining us for Ask a Librarian Live. And today we are going to be speaking with some librarians from our amazing history and genealogy department. We will be And um, I am going to go to them now. So hold on just a moment. I'm getting a little bit of an echo. Let's bring in our, our guests. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Hello, so we are joined. Do you guys uh, want to introduce yourselves? Uh, Kelly, maybe first. Hi, I'm Kelly Wallace. I am the California History Subject Specialist at Central Library. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And I'm Julie Huffman. I'm the Genealogy Subject Specialist at LAPL. How about you, Glenn? <laughs> Glenn maybe can't hear us that well. So we can skip over him. Um, <laughs> Kelly, maybe we could we could just skip ahead to, um, I know that you wanted to kind of introduce what we wanted, we're gonna be talking about today. So do you wanna go ahead with yeah, that? Yeah, let's get, yes. Uh, today we're working on the premise that you're stuck in your house. While you're stuck in your house, why not research it? But in all seriousness, the history of a house, your house is one of the most frequently asked questions that we get in the history department. Hello. Oh. <laughs> uh, so we are going to show you uh, some of the resources that we have that will help you research the history of your house. We have a lot of information to cover, so let's get going. We have created a research guide for the, finding the history of your house, and let me show you how you get there. And I'm Glenn Creese, and okay. I'm the map. I'm the map librarian, and also the official <laughs> librarian dinosaur. <laughs> hey, and, Glenn. Uh, uh, <laughs> Julie and Glenn, you guys can jump in anytime if you have a comment to make or I make a glaring mistake. Uh, you may have noticed that we have a new interface for the period that we're in, the library at home. Uh, let's scroll down to research. Click on research. Things are located in slightly different places now. Okay, over here on the left, it's an alphabetical list. Let's scroll down to research guides. Click on research guides. There we get another alphabetical list. Scroll down to history of your house, searching for. Let's click on that. All right, here we go. We have a lot of links and information here. We're not going to cover them all. We're going to hit the highlights and we're going to try to highlight. Um, Sources that you can utilize while you're at home. Uh, county, city offices that are closed right now. So we're going to focus on things that you can use right now while you're sheltering at home. First thing I want to hit is number two, Department of Building and Safety. You can oftentimes find the, uh, as it says here, the construction date of the house and sometimes the name of the contractor and the architect, original owner, et cetera. So let's click on the link. It's very easy to use. We're going to search by address. Let's click on that. And it tells you the format to use. It doesn't want any periods or symbols. I have to go like this. All 
right, there's the address I put in. 605 South Irving Boulevard. That's the one I am interested in, so I'm going to check in the box. Then hit continue. You'll see the results. You get all sorts of uh, building permits. Here are the dates of the permits. It will tell you whether it's for an alteration or an addition. Over here, the right, if it has a little page image here, that means there's a digital image for the permit. Those have the most information. Let's try this one for November 26, 1928. Let's click on the image. All right, here we go. And you'll see that's information. We scroll down. It's not the original permit, but here it has owner's name, Mr. L. M. Lockhart. And then down here it says what they're doing. Their first floor toilet is going to be moved back six feet. It's going to be a new stairway to the basement. Relocation of furnaces, et cetera, et cetera. So that, uh, that's the kind of information you can find on these building permits. And sometimes you get more information than others. All right, now I'll wait till the message ends. Okay, now I want to show you the California index. Over here to the left again, alphabetical list, let's click on LAPL indexes. Scroll down to California index. For those of you who are not familiar with the California index, it is your go-to resource for local history. It's an index we put together that um, points a person to books, newspaper articles, magazine articles, photos, and clipping files that we have at the Central Library that are related to people, places, important events uh, in the history of California. There is an emphasis on Southern California. The index is unique to LAPL. We created it in-house and it's free and accessible to everyone. So let's get started. We're using 605 South Irving Boulevard today as alternate address. You'll see why in a moment. Okay, let's put that in. We have three results. This first one says residence, Los Angeles, mayor's residence. So that's what we're using today as our address for most of our examples is the mayor's mansion. You'll notice this record is a citation. It points you to an article in the Los Angeles Times that ran on October 13th, 1995. So let's make a note of that because we'll look that up later in the Los Angeles Times database. Let's keep going and look at the other records. This is an example of a old fashioned catalog card entry the librarians back in the day made. Uh, these have been scanned and entered in there. But look, at there's a lot of information. This one tells you it's 14 rooms, an acre of land, French colonial, Gives you the number of square feet. The third record's interesting because it relates this residence to Lee Strasberg, who you may know as the, he was the acting teacher, creator of the method. Uh, it says here, the mayor's mansion was formerly the residence of Lee Strasberg. And then notice down here, it says, see California room vertical file under the heading 
residences, Los Angeles, Mayor's Mansion. That shows you that we do have a vertical file. Those are old fashioned vertical files with clippings. You cannot access them right now because they're in the history department at Central Library, but they're a wealth of information. All right, so now we notice up here, mayor's residence. Well, let's try searching under that and see what happens. All right, same thing. I'm gonna go since I have it here already. I'll just put that in. All right, we have 10 results. We have a few more results when we search by mayor's residence. Uh, I want to just scroll down. It's all kinds of pointing to other articles. You can kind of see the subjects. So it's about the remodeling. All right, here, record number eight says it's a well-researched and concise history of the Getty House. And if you notice over here, it's got a link that says click for document. That means this item has been digitized and you can view it from home. So let's click on that. Here we go, let's scroll down. And it's lots of information. You'll notice here the lots originally purchased by Mr. and Mrs. Paulson. Gives a little bit of history of the area. Wilshire Boulevard had been a dirt trail. Keep going. The Lockhart's we saw on the building permit are mentioned here. They bought the home in 1928. And then down here, it's kind of interesting. There's a little bit that John Barrymore and Dolores Costello lived in the house. And it's kind of a sordid tale. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they, uh, he met Dolores when he was 43 in their 20s. He was still married to his second wife. Her father didn't approve of it. <laughs> they set sail on a cruise. They got married, their rocky marriage lasted despite drinking spells and long absences. Slugged her, broke her nose. She left uh, here, collected her belongings uh -huh. most of the for furniture and moved with her children to 605 South Irving Boulevard. Uh, down here a little further, we'll find out about Lee Strasberg. Lee Strasberg and his wife uh, were tenants in 1975, and Tidewater owned the company, offered them um, the opportunity to buy the house, and they refused it. So there's, you find out the information about Lee Strasberg. And then you keep coming, all sorts of good information. I want to point out there's a great bibliography. So you can find out all sorts of information there by just by going to the California Index. Let's click that. Uh, one other thing about the California Index is it has a lot of information on neighborhoods. So you're researching a house, but you want to know about your neighborhood too. Now, the mayor's residence is in, some people call it Hancock Park, but we're going to call it um, Windsor Square. Let's see what comes up when we put that in. All right, Los Angeles, Windsor Square. Right here, first record is another... Uh, item that's been digitized, click on it, 
And up comes this really cool pamphlet advertising the new development, Windsor Square. The old fashioned telephone numbers. And it touts the new development. A subdivision without mistakes. It has a map of all the lots. So that's a lot of fun. That's a cool thing to look at. So you can find a lot of information about neighborhoods in the California Index also. Okay, let's go out of that. Oh, that's my other one. So now let's um, search the Los Angeles Times. Uh, we don't have to go out of this. We can just do, uh, where are we? Research and homework over here on our left list of, oh, oh that's not research guides. No, we want research and homework. Oh, it keeps moving. Hang on, bear with me. <laughs> Okay, this will take us to our databases. Doesn't look like what the databases start here. They scroll down, there's an alphabetical listing. So we're looking for the Los Angeles Times. Let's click on L, jump down to the L's. You'll notice there are two Los Angeles Times databases. The first one is more current, 1985 to the present. And then there's Los Angeles Times Historical, which covers 1881 to 1994. We're gonna search that one first. Let's click on it. Here we go. I don't know why I keep getting this, but that's all right. Okay, I always recommend going to advanced search, so let's just do that. You don't really need it in this case, but all right. Since we want to search for the address together, we're gonna to put quotation marks around it. Otherwise, it'll look for 605 over here and Irving someplace else. All right. Oops, I put a comment, I think. Let's see. All right. So here we go 21 results. Kind of gives you a little bit of a clue. Most recent first, if you wanted to do the oldest first, you could change that here. And we're just gonna keep this down. Gives you a little bit of clue to what the article's about. I wanna show you number 17. Wife of oil man Lockhart gets divorce decree. So this is interesting. The Lockharts, we know, bought the house in 1928. But here's a story that Mrs. Lockhart is getting a divorce from her multimillionaire oil man husband. But this is the part I like. It was a settlement, she said, that was realized despite threats on Lockhart's part that she would never get a penny from him if she didn't walk out of his 29-room home like a lady. Please walk out of my house like a lady and don't make any demands on me. I'm like, oh boy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Let's go back. And there, are, as you see, there are 21 stories about the mansion that you can, that you could find lots of information if you want. So let's get out of that and let's go. 
let's look up that one article that we had the citation for the pricey we do for that one that one was in um 1995 so let's go to the present la times advanced search with the advanced search you can pick the date and we know what date our story ran so let's click on this date, October 13, yeah, 13, 1995. We want to put in a bit of the title. It was, it's, what was it? It's a, it's amazing. Rotation marks again, so it looks for that phrase together. Let's click search. Hmm. There's our story. Click on it. I want to look at the full text PDF. And let's download the PDF up here that allows us to do a little more with it. Well, let's just do this. There's one thing I wanted to point out. Oh, here we go. In this story, it's talking about the um, renovation that was started by uh, Mayor Reardon. He was not living at the house at the time, but it has a lot of little fun facts. I like this part down here. Let's make it a little bigger. Uh, they were designing an office. As for the books in the custom wall unit, they were all in the house, Duperon says. We retrieved them from storage. Among the titles, Manhole Covers of Los Angeles and Tom Bradley's Impossible Dream. I'm like, Manhole Covers of Los Angeles? I mean, <laughs> that sounds fascinating. So I'm over here, I go to our catalog. I mean, that's right up my alley. All right, let's see. There it is. Click on it. So uh, we have two circulating copies in the science bar. You, you cannot access them now, but maybe when this is all over, you can come in and check out Manhole Covers of Los Angeles. I thought that was kind of a fun thing for that article. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's what I thought. Okay. All right, um, that's it for this first section. I'm gonna come back in later uh, at the end, but now let me turn it over to my esteemed colleague, Julie Huffman. Thank you, Kelly. Hey, <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay, so I am the genealogy subject specialist and you might wonder, well, what does genealogy have to do with looking for the history of a house? But, um, of course, people live in the house, and genealogy is all about finding people, usually dead people, but um, not always. So we have a couple databases that can help you do that, not just trace your own genealogy, but help you trace your house. So using um, some of our databases, I'm going to go to the same area, which is kind of the, the nice spot on our website where you can find all of our databases, the alphabetical listing of them. And uh, the first place I'm going to go is we have a group of digitized city directories. Now, city directories were the precursors to today to phone books. Um, only they included, they usually included a little more information like the name of your spouse, what you did for a living, where your business was. And so 
Los Angeles has a good collection of city directories. Um, the last one that was published was 1942, and we have most of them digitized on our website. So if you scroll down to city and street directories digitized and click on that, you can go in and see what we've got. So there are two groups here. One, we have the city and business and phone directories. We have one phone book, basically, but um, more hopefully down the road. And then street directories. Now these are directories that are organized by address. So they are perfect for searching for the history of your house because you look up the address and then it tells you who lived there. But because these are digitized, you can also use these city directories in kind of the same manner. They're organized by name, but the digitized um, aspect of them lets you search using keywords. So this is um, our collection of city directories. There are 142. Um, in addition to Los Angeles, we have some other areas, um, neighborhoods after 1942. This one is the whole state of California. But what I'm going to do here is a simple search, which is going to look through all of them at once. And so what you do now, I might tell you, this is a very literal search. So you have to be careful. You have to experiment a little bit because not everything um, works perfectly when you're searching by address. But I'm gonna just show you an example. So this is the address we've been using, 605 South Irving. Now you'll notice I have my S in here. It doesn't have a period after it. I am just guessing that's going to be the way it's listed in a city directory. I might miss some of the listings that say 605 South Irving, but for this example, we're just going to start with this. Now I'm going to search through all of our collections, including those reverse street directories. I say search. We'll see five come up. Now I'm certain more listings for the people living at this esteemed address would have shown up in many of the city directories from 1873 to 1942. But let's just go with these for now. I'm gonna click on the um, 1932 directory, and it's gonna show me where those keywords, it's a phrase, 605 S Irving showed up. Happily in this database, it highlights what you, what you put in. So this one, we'll see, is basically someone who's an employee at the house. This is Tina C, uh, Tina, and if you go up here, you'll see the surname, Anderson. So Tina Anderson was a maid at 605 South Irving. If I click on this little arrow here, it's gonna take me to the next hit. There are three hits in this book that have that address. Now we'll see Gus Gartner, <laughs> was the chauffeur. If I click for the next hit, Anna Lofstrom was the cook. So I got three hits for this city directory, but not one of them was the primary resident at that, that address. Um, and I'm gonna show you how you can kind of experiment to get around to find more information about this place. Within this 1932 city directory, you can also search. So here's a little magnifying glass on the toolbar. If I click on that and type mayor, because we're thinking this is the mayor's mansion with our modern minds, that's what we're thinking. So I'm gonna switch using that as, I'm gonna search using that as a keyword. So what comes up, we have 11 results. Um, it starts us out on hit number three for some reason. That's just something the software program does. Mm -hmm. But this one will show us all kinds of things that use the word mayor as a keyword. This one has someone whose last name is mayor. If I go to the next one, we'll see someone who's the confidential secretary to the mayor. I go to the next one, we'll see someone who's assistant secretary to the mayor. And this next one actually shows us the mayor. <laughs> so this is John C. Porter, who in 1932 was the mayor of the city of Los Angeles. 
This Maddie Lee here, that tells us he, his wife's name. So his wife was Maddie Lee Porter. 105 City Hall is the address of the mayor's office. And look at his home here in 1932 is 815 Lorraine Boulevard. So in 1932, that 605 South Irving address was not the mayor's mansion. Now, if I want to really dig around some more and try to see if there are any other addresses or any other people tied to this 605 South Irving address, one thing, when I said it's a literal search, I'm going to show you this. See how some of these addresses here um, have an H in front of the house number or an R in front of the house number. That usually means um, householder, like the owner, the H is, is the householder, R is resident or could be renter. Um, basically, I just look at it as like H is the person who owns the place and R is someone who lives there. Sometimes, because this is such a literal search software program that it uses, um, you have to put these letters in front of your address. So let me, here's our address. And what I'm going to do is put an R in front of it just to kind of play around with that idea. And if I say search, it turns out I do get one hit. And so this is going to tell me something else. This tells me someone named Kay Borline was a resident at 605 South Irving. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean she was the one who owned the home, because if I saw an H there, I would think that. But um, it gives you some clues as to another person who might live in, in that um, area. Now, another thing to watch out for, for instance, if you were typing an address that was Glendale. If you look up here, you see how this, how they've split up the word Glendale, Glen hyphen Dale. So if you search up here yeah, and you type Glendale, that, that hit is not going to come up because it doesn't see it as one word. The computer is very literal with this program, but it can tell you, it can tell you some stuff. Now, if I go back, I wanted to show you how one of these street directories is set up. And I'm, so I'm going to go into the street directories collection. Again, this is the one that's organized by address. So if I choose 1956, I'm just going to kind of show you, instead of searching using that mag, uh, magnifying glass, you can look through these books like you're just picking up a phone book and looking through them. So on the left side, you'll see all the pages as thumbnails, and you can just kind of scoot through them. And they're organized, as you can see, by name of street first, so this is Florence, and then it's organized by house number under that. So if I'm looking for 605 South Irving Boulevard, I'm gonna to go to the eyes for Irving. And that's about, let me see if I can find it. You kind of have to hunt and peck a little bit. And I'm just kind of going alphabetically until I think I'm going to hit Irving. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of back and forth, but I know the genealogists out there are used to that. <laughs> All right, so I think we're close here. Okay, so here we see Irving Boulevard South, and there's an Irving Boulevard North, but this address, 605 South Irving, we know we want this. So I'm gonna look over here for 605, and if you go down the list, ends at 454, so I'm gonna go back up, and here it is. So if I zoom in on that, 605 South Irving, Oh, we see an L.M. Lockhart happens to live there in 1956. So these digitized city directories are a good way to sort of track people through time. Another thing you can use to uh, figure out who lived somewhere is Ancestry.com. And happily, um, ProQuest 
and Ancestry have offered remote access during this time of quarantine. So if you have one of our library cards, you can go into this list of databases, click on Ancestry Library Edition from home and use it. And I would really say do it because it is an expensive database. And so if you have this opportunity to play around with it and not just research your own um, ancestry, you can do all kinds of fun things with it. So I'm gonna click on it and get into it. Absolutely. But it's dynamite. Yeah. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And Ancestry has many, 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 many different record sets that you can search through. Um, what I'm going to look through is something a little unusual. You might not think that it would you, it would have answers for you with this particular task, but if you say search card catalog, that's where you can find a list of all of its data sets. But one, the one we're gonna look for is the California voter registration list. And you're like, well, what on earth does that have to do with researching the history of your house? Well, if I type <laughs> keywords California voter in the title, two sets come up. One, 1866 to 1898, but I'm going to try this more recent one. So you click on that. And now this is one of the data sets where you can actually search using keywords pretty effectively. Sometimes Ancestry's data sets don't let you do that, but this one's a good one for it. And I usually like to click this match all terms exactly box. And it is a little buggy. I never put my city in here. For some reason, that doesn't bring anything up, so I leave that blank. And here in the keyword, what you want to do is put in quotes the address you're looking for. Now, 605 South Irving is Boulevard, South Irving Boulevard, but I'm going to leave Boulevard out of this search because Boulevard can sometimes be abbreviated in really wacky ways like BLVD or just BVD, so I'm going to leave it off completely. Now I'm going to click search. And you'll see 17 items come up. But these tell us people who registered to vote in these years who happen to be living at that address. And so if I click on Leslie M. Lockhart, and this is the 1950 voter registration, you can actually oh. see, oh, where is it? I'm going to say see more. Oh, this is Jesse, but this will be fine. If you click on the actual image of the item, you'll see the voter registration list. And this is kind of neat to do because you can see people who lived around them as well. Um, let's see here. Okay, here's Clarine Lockhart. My, uh, you won't, I don't think you can see my mouse on this screen, but at the bottom of the second column is Clarine at that address. And then at the top here, we see a Grace Lockhart, but she's at a different address. But we see Leslie M. Lockhart, 605 South Irving Boulevard. D means he's a Democrat, just in case you're interested mm -hmm. in that. And then, <laughs> and then DS is declines to state. So you can kind of see who all the neighbors are, too, as well um, for this uh, 1952 voter registration list. So that's kind of a cool thing. And also one, one other example of how it pays to experiment with how you search. This one I did, you put an S in there for South Irving, but if I take that S out, I get a lot of results too. These are all the same address without the S in there because maybe these particular years decided not to put an S in front of that. It was just plain Irving. You can kind of see there's some kooky spellings of names. That's because they're using an optical character re recognition software that has kind of goofed a little. But if you just click on this view record, you can see the actual um, record and see that it's not necessarily um, someone who's spelled like a kooky way. All right. Now, besides city directories, these voter registrations, 
Um, you can also look at people in the census to see where they lived during each of the um, census years. 1940 is the most recent census that we can access um, as far as individual records go. And the thing about the census, though, is that you can only search on these big databases using a person's name or other things like that, but you can't search by address. You can get around that, though. There is a website that's really handy for figuring out where a certain address is in a certain census year. And it's called Steve Morse, and he's wonderful. He's uh, one of the great, great people in genealogy resources. Steve Morse, what I do is I go to Google and I just type in Steve Morse enumeration district because all of the census director censuses are organized by enumeration district. But you don't know off the top of your head where 605 South Irving Boulevard falls in the enumeration districts. So this um, website that Steve Morse put together helps you find that. And if you click on, on his link here, you'll see up at the top, you can search by address for all these different censuses. It's not all of them. Censuses go back to 1790, but not all the censuses had addresses in them. So if we start with 1940, all you gotta do is put in your location here. I'm gonna do it kind of quickly, and if you need a refresher, just come back and watch the recorded version of this. But house number and then street, You can see down here all the different census pages that come up. That's too many to go through one by one. So we're going to filter by street. Okay, and I'm just going to hit I for Irving. Go down to the bottom. Oopsie. Irving Boulevard. And you'll see now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six different um, parts of the census to go through. That's still too many, in my opinion. So if you go to Google and you type in the address, you can find its cross streets. So it's between 6th Street and Wilshire Boulevard. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to put that as cross streets. 6th Street and Wilshire. And then you see it pinpoints it to one census page. So I'm going to click on that. And I brought it up before. What you can do at this point is click on Family Search Viewer for a free. Um, family Search is free to everybody, and that will show you the page of the census from home. I brought it up, though, because sometimes it takes a while for it to load. So here we are. This is page one of the 1940 census for that specific enumeration district that our address should fall within. So if you look at this page, you'll see on the left, we have house numbers indicated for the person living there. And then uh, on its side, vertically, you see the name of the street. So what I like to do is rotate the page so that I can see the street without having to turn my head 180 degrees. And so if you just click, and basically what you need to do at this point, you see there are 40 pages. You have to just keep clicking this arrow, and you see here's Irving Boulevard. All right. Here's Irving Boulevard, but the, and these are the house numbers, but we're looking for 605. I happen to know that this is going to be on page 26. This seems to be a bug here. One moment. Oh, for crying out loud. Even though Family Search is free, you have to sign up for a free account with them. Um, all right, so I'm going to zoom in here and we'll see 605. 
You can see on the side, Irving Boulevard. And R means renting, O means owning. So this is a renter, but he is the head of the household. His name is George Ackrett, his wife, Virginia, his grandson, Robert Norton, and a cook. Also, if you look down a little, and this is very unusual, there's another list. Different. There were two listings for 605, and one had all the servants listed. But this guy, George Ackrett, if you scroll over to the right, you can see in private practice. So the census gives you lots of You have access to probate records. And that might be of interest to you who are searching for wills or that sort of thing. What you would do is you go to the search card catalog. And if you have the names of people who lived in your house, you could search through their probate to see if they left the house to someone else. All you do is you type the name of your state and the word probate in the title. And here you go. And so you could just see all kinds of wills um, and probates for people who might have lived here in this house. For instance, Greenwood was one of the names that came up and just see if possibly their will might be here. But you can see there's all kinds of stuff you can look through. Normally, you'd have to go down to the county courthouse to see all that stuff. But Ancestry has, has probate records for states all over the place. So you can do a lot of snooping around that way. But that is about all, I mean, it's scratching the surface, but that, that, that's where I'd start. If you're looking for the history of your house um, this, with the city directories, the voter records, and the census, those are a, a good place to get some names. And then you can do some of the things that Kelly talked about using those names, like searching the LA Times database and that sort of thing. That's really cool, Julie. Thank you. I'm definitely going to check out some of this stuff um, on my own house because I think it's from the 20s. So. <laughs> Um, Glenn, did you have something that you wanted to right. share with us? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'll bring up your screen here. Okay. How much time do we have left? Well, you know, it's. I think we said an hour, so maybe maybe if you want to just go through um, some stuff real quickly, we can. There are a couple questions in the chat too. We could try and answer those too. But but go ahead and uh, you can you can go ahead and talk about what. It's um, a link to Sanborn Fire Insurance Atlases. Within this, you can go down, and we have a PDF that we use at the desk to determine. Uh, different street uh, <laughs> addresses and what volume of Sanborn they're in. I see it's opening very slowly. Uh, and while it's doing this, I'll just tell you, one of the reasons why people want to look at Sanborns is they want to get an idea of what the neighborhood looked like. And it'll also show you the basic 
layout in of the lot of the house, what it looked like originally, hopefully. Sanborn Atlases don't list the, the name of the owner. Uh, they don't, they're not published every single year. So our collection goes back to 1888. A lot of them start in, in like 1906. And, um, one of the reasons why a lot of people like to do the history of your house uh, is they think there's their house is haunted. Sanborn atlases do not tell you if a house is haunted either. Um, that's Kelly's department. <laughs> can, you, can you see the screen moving? Are you still there? Can you hear us, Gwen? Well, Are you guys still there? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear yeah. you, Glenn. Yeah, can you hear us? I think maybe Glenn's on a bit of a delay. So, um, you know, what I was thinking is we could actually, since we were having trouble getting to those Sanborn maps, um, I can Glenn, if you, you just wanted to say a few words, you know, just Dave, quickly gonna, about those. I'm going to abort not. that mission. Yeah. Abort. <laughs> Did you have anything else you wanted to say about those maps, Glenn, real quick? And then we could just see if there's any uh, kind of outstanding questions here in the chat. Okay. Okay, so let me go That's back. That's all right. Here. So we've, we've got a few questions from, um, looks like Richard Krauss is in the chat. Uh, and he was asking what online services might help somebody verify their ancestry for that question. It's all right, census. just go to the questions. So wait, wait. Um, Rich, Richard yeah. is asking. It's too complicated, really. I, you know, we'll, you know, you can do it some other time. It's not something that I you think, can explain I in a minute. I think Glenn's a few seconds behind yeah. us. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring him down, actually. In fact... Um, Julie and Kelly, do you want to try and answer this question from Richard? Uh, what online services might help somebody verify their ancestry for that question on the census? Hmm. Oh, I know what you're talking about, Richard, because I think you mentioned that you had to do this when you filled out the census this time around. Well, boy, that is a toughie because um, I, uh, that's, one, you could do one Julie's of the commercial question. DNA tests, and um, you could do a DNA test uh, using Ancestry.com or Family Tree DNA or 23andMe. Um, if you do the nuts and bolts of genealogy research and find a passenger list record or a naturalization record using Ancestry.com, usually you can then see what country your ancestors came from. But it's not a quick answer. Uh, generally, I imagine for that census question, if you've never done any genealogy, you're probably just gonna answer what you see in the mirror or what you've heard your family say that you are as far as ethnicity. But I'd say ancestry.com is probably okay. the best. Um, so we had some questions. I think I was trying to answer some people's questions about some just general library stuff in the chat. Uh, one thing we might want to just emphasize is that any questions that you have, if you go to lapl.org slash um, ask a librarian, or if yeah. you go to our uh, website and click on the ask a librarian link, you can email our info now department and they're really skilled and really good at getting back to you. Um, any questions you have about your account or not being able to get in or just sort of simple questions, I, I would check that out. Um, here's a question. Um, what online library resources 
Oh, what online ri library resources would you suggest for armchair traveling while, while we are all staying at home? I'm not sure exactly what they mean, but maybe you guys can get uh, creative with that. Armchair traveling. Well, Kill, <laughs> that is actually a tricky question. Um, books that are um, what I would call travel memoirs, they're not travel guides, but they're accounts of someone's journey across, you know, the steppes or, you know, the Sahara Desert or whatever. Um, they don't really have their own subject heading, so it can be tricky to find. I think they're quite often just under travel writing. Let me see if, how that works. Let me go to my screen. See if we can try that. Let me bring it up for you here. Thanks. Oops. I know uh, our colleague did a blog post. Uh, well, there's like lots of ebooks. There's ebooks in the catalog, like uh, Michael Palin and people like that. Um, Bill Bryson, that you can listen to, you can download. Just try this. I'm if you want to sure. see maps, you can go into uh, research and homework and look at A to Z maps. If the um, the overdrive section is actually a little better about searching by keywords. So if if you go to e-media.lapl.org and go right into Overdrive and just use travel as your keyword, I am seeing some eBooks coming up that um, that show you, well, travel guides, maybe not memoirs, but there is a load of um, travel books you can look at. There's an Eyewitness Japan that looks great, um, all kinds of stuff. Just And I think that that, um, that database might be better for searching uh, for travel books, I just used the keyword travel and a lot came up. Yeah, so that's on our uh, yeah. lapl.overdrive.com. You guys have any favorite travel books? Well, it's a good question. There are. Uh... Yeah, alive. <laughs> uh, of course I like oh, well, it's not really travel so much but Peter Mayle talking about Provence I enjoy um, Hemingway in Paris what else um, George Orwell I do like Bill Bryson also My He's favorite is uh, in Patagonia by Bruce Chatwin. That's a great, uh, and that's yeah. an example of that real literary travel writing versus just you know a, a travel guide or book. Um, let me see. Do we have any more uh, questions here in the chat? I was just going to point uh, out that Bill Bryson. This isn't a travel book, but it's a at home, a short history of private life. And people might be able to relate to that at this current point in time. Okay, uh, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> at home yeah we're all at home um well I, I guess it's getting on to about 1 p.m i don't see any other um outstanding questions in the chat i will show you really quickly i'm gonna um maybe say goodbye to you guys and i'll just show a couple things on the website on my screen because i think i might lose your audio when i do that so thanks so much for for helping us out today guys uh, I really appreciate it. That was really cool. And I'm going to check out some of those resources and maybe do some digging around about uh, where I live. So I hope people in our audience um, got something out of that. I'm sure they did. And uh, I'll 
see you guys later. And um, uh, if you guys want to hang around in the audience, I'm just going to show you a couple things on our website real quick. And I hope this works. Okay, so I just wanted to remind you that while the library is closed, all of our branches are closed right now. Um, we do have a new feature on our website where we have uh, this kind of landing page called the library at home. We've kind of fronted some of our more um, digital and online resources. So we just want to make sure that you're getting to those things that you can access online. Um, we've made a lot of effort to try and uh, increase the availability of certain digital resources like we talked about earlier. Ancestry, you can now access from home. That's something that you could previously only get from your uh, computer in a branch. Uh, but check out LAPL.org, our website. You can um, figure out how to get an e-card. This is something if you do not have a library card, you can uh, sign up for an e-card. It's basically a, a sort of limited temporary card that you can get uh, for people in Los Angeles, but it gives you access to all these online resources. If you already have a library card, it's just expired or you're having problems with your account, uh, you don't want to sign up for that. But if you don't have a library card already, that's something that you can uh, do. And if you have any questions about the library being closed or fines or your account or anything, these frequently asked questions, we'll answer some of that uh, just about you know what we're doing while we're closed. The the gist of it is that we are not charging any fines, obviously, for uh, books that are out during this closure. Um, we're also doing a lot of online events. So if you're looking for a story time for your family, something like that, check out our online calendar. We have online events listed here. Uh, we also have a lot of new blog posts coming out. We've got a lot of librarians that are working from home, so they are able to generate some really interesting content. We've got author interviews, uh, reading guides, things like that. And then, of course, we've got all of our ebooks and audiobooks um, on our eMedia page, so check that out. Those are all books and other resources, uh, videos, audiobooks that you can access online just with your library card. It's all free. It's all from the um, Los Angeles Public Library. And I'm going to sign off. I thank you for attending our second ever Ask a Librarian Live. Uh, I think we're starting to get the hang of it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.